What is going on? You are listening to Tag's podcast, aka Talk About Gay Sex podcast. This is the new year, 2023. You are listening to episode 427. I'm your host, Stevie. So happy to welcome in 2023 with Jeremy Ross Lopez. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm good. How are you? Really, really good. Happy to be here. Also celebrating the new year, the second day when we record it, Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. Happy New Year, boys. So good to hear your voices. Exactly. Likewise. Yes. And, you know, we had a little break from the show, so it's kind of nice to I feel refreshed and ready to go. We've got a full show ahead of us. But I do want to check in with you. How did how was your holidays and New Year? Jeremy, how were your holidays? Mine were really good. My holidays went by super fast. I felt like we packed a lot in, but it was very fun to get together with family and then uh, just some low key time in the mountains with my mom over the weekend and just ringing in the new year and excited for what's to come. Yeah, we'll get uh, into a little bit of goals or resolutions in a minute. But how did you celebrate your holidays, New Year's, Cody? Oh, with family. And well, I work New Year's. So that was a little bit of a trial. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see Joe until like, two o'clock in the morning but ne- we oh. are oh it's okay our anniversary is was yesterday so we're going out tonight we're gonna have a nice dinner we're gonna just ring it in right we're gonna have a whole do-over tonight so yeah i'm happy that's that's right i forget that you guys essentially met in the holiday season correct? oh yeah yep our first date was january 1st uh two years ago so it's been two years yesterday Nice. Congratulations on that. Really cool. Um, yeah, I had a great, um, also on the West Coast, was with my family. We, it did fall on, a, on the weekend, which was kind of cool. So I felt like I had two full weeks of, and still kind of celebrating because I have friends here in town still in New York now. But one of the fun things that we did that I've gone to before was the Baloney Show in San Francisco. Ooh. It's an all-male cabaret and oh. it's so super sexy, super fun. Like they really, I love it when you can blend comedy and sex appeal and they do such a good job, really celebrate all body types in the show. So you see all of these different types of sexy men up there on the stage. I love it. And yeah, I highly recommend it. They did, they kind of do a quarterly show. So check them out. You can go to sfbalonyshow.com. It's really great art and super fun. So that was great. And well, I want to get into some New Year's resolutions. I was looking at Twitter and Twitter, the gays on Twitter had a lot to say about New Year's resolutions. Uh And a lot of them were my New Year's resolution is to have a lot of gay sex. (laughs) New Year's resolution, be gay, do crime. Uh, (laughs) My New Year's resolution is to be queer and indigenous as ever. A lot of just accepting and being gay, a lot of sex, really fun things, I think. Um, I have a few. We were playing this game all week on New Year's Eve where you look at this puzzle and the first four words that you see, I think I sent it to you both. Mm Mm-hmm are the mantra for the year. So mine were connection, miracles, gratitude, and love. Connection's a biggie for me. And one of the cool things that happened to me, I ended the night after a house party for the New Year's celebration. We did go to the Eagle, but at like three in the morning, I think we got in. And it was a $40 cover, which we were like, Oh my God. I know. And it was, so I said to a friend of mine that worked there who doesn't have a lot of clout, but I said, really 40 bucks for an hour? And he says, let me call the manager. I know you know him, Jeremy. He called him down and he said, fine. And he literally pushed me into the club (laughs) and said, like, pushed me. And, uh, Did he just let you yeah. or like all of you? He said, how many of you? And I said, three others. They're right there. And he let us all in. Thank goodness. Oh, oh my gosh. God. I can't believe $40. What <laughs> the fuck? I know. And you For know, an hour? hour? Well, yeah. right. Oh. 40, I guess everybody was, you know, charging yeah. a lot on that day. So it's to be expected. 
So we went for an hour and one of the highlights of that was over the summer, I think I talked about going to the Naked Beach uh, here in, in New Jersey, actually. And uh-huh. there was a guy that I had met on the beach that my friend had called him over to introduce me to him. And he had a beautiful dick as he was walking down the beach. So, of course, he caught my attention. And as he walked <laughs> over, he was chit-chatting with me. And I'm sitting down. My friend's next to me. And he's talking with me and said, oh, you're sexy. And I said, thanks. So are you. I'm like, that's why we called you over. And he started to get hard, I think I told on the show. And so he was embarrassed. And he did give me his Instagram and he had to immediately run into the ocean. So we were keeping contact a little bit, but it was one of those things. And we even said, let's go on a proper date. Well, that fizzled out and no one ever kind of, you know, went forward with let's Mm -hmm. actually do this. So cut Mm -hmm. to the other night at the Eagle, 3 30 in the morning, a guy walks right and he's like, Hey, we met on the beach. It was the guy. And he he did grab me and we went into the bathroom just to revisit, make sure all parts are working. And they are. (laughs) And as a result came out and said, so we were going to go on a date. Are you, can we still go? I said, yes, let's go on a date. He's like, okay, let's do it. And so I said, you know, so I'm going to follow up for sure. And it was kind of a great way of bridging somebody that I met in 2022 and taking it into the new, you know, hopefully in this year. Oh yeah. What a way to ring in the new year. I love that. Yeah, I know. I was like, that's a good omen. I like that. Um, do any of these Jeremy resonate with you? The Twitter responses, do you have anything that your goals or things you're looking forward to resolution wise in 2023? I kind of just want to be uh, a better version of myself, but I'm not looking to, change anything specifically i'm really just looking to like date more socialize more and i don't know just have more fun i mean i i think every year everyone sets like kind of ridiculous big changes for themselves as goals and it's like one of those things where you watch people like work out for the first week and then never work out again (laughs) and stuff like that so it's not one of those things that I want to set for myself, but I just want to have more fun and stay happy and be present in the moment and just enjoy life. I love that you yeah. said that date more and be open to, did you say sex too? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, oh that's yeah. Kinda, over Jeremy and I, when Jeremy visited me, we were kind of talking for a second there and we had to st- stop ourselves. We can't keep saying that we're celibate. And we're like, we have to to stop saying that we're celibate these days because that's not going to work in our favor. So I'm stopping saying that, Jeremy. I don't know if you are too. Yes. Um, Because I want to change that direction a little bit. It is funny, though, about the gym. There's a guy that lives in my building, and when we're in the gym together, he's like, yeah, I guess I'll see you for the next next two weeks. We're going to see those that are going to be infiltrating the gym. And then they'll peter off. And we both said two weeks. Yep. Give (laughs) give them two weeks. That We'll have to deal with them. Uh, Somebody else told me, are you going to do a dry January? And they looked at me at a party I was at. And I I was actually pondering it for two seconds. And then I looked over at them and I said, "Uh, my birthday's in January. No, I will not be. (laughs) What am I thinking? You do not do a dry month when your birthday falls in that. No. no, I know. Come through in February. Well, yeah, I guess it is a shorter month. I'm not really wanting to do those extremes. I just, you know, I don't know. Cody, do you have goals or things that you are putting out into 2023? Well, since gay sex is on everybody's list, I'm putting that on mine too, even though I'm on a relationship. You can never go wrong with that, right? So gay sex is on the list now. But when you sent me that, that, Uh, mantra thing for 2023. I got family, alignment, love, and purpose. And I think that that's wonderful. So I'm just going to really, really focus on my goals, really focus on what my purpose is and try and put that good energy out there. Yeah. Jeremy, do you remember your, I love that Cody, by the way, those are great things and great mantra. Yes. And do you remember your words, Jeremy? Uh, Let me see. I texted them to you. I don't remember. I remember breakthrough. Uh, Yes. I think so. I mine were. Where are they? Oh, connection, purpose, breakthrough, and gratitude. 
Okay. I really like good that. ones too. Yeah. 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 Great mantras. I mean, obviously they're positive words. I don't know if there were any negative words on this. I know, but, right? You know put, <laughs> yeah, but that's a, I think put out all, all the good omens out there for yourself, really. And for those of you listening, I will post this on tagspodcast.com. It's a fun thing to do, and especially in the early. It's not like you have to live by these, but it's just a fun game to play, and it's all positive. So put that out there. Well, you know, travel is going to be big for so many people, including myself. And I know, Jeremy, you're going to be going to Sicily. Yes. But there is a an Italian, it's the first Italian LGBTQ plus tour provider called Quickie Tours, and it's Q-U-I-I-K-Y Tours, they're providing an announced, they announced this, a White Lotus tour that, of course, because everybody and their grandmother, I think you're the only person, Cody, that didn't watch White Lotus season two. Okay, rub it in a little, why don't you? I'm going there, too, to Tarmina, where where they shot it. Well, I've, okay, so one of the places that they will be visiting is Taramino, Taramino, The resort where much of season two was filmed and it's the old part of sicily and i was just refreshing having my mind refreshed by my friend who i went with earlier tonight that we had such a good time particularly in taramino um, but it's like way up on a hill it's on a cliff and yeah cliff. and the thing is on the show they made it seem like the beach was just like outside the resort and it's really like you have to go down be yeah driven it's down. not walkable distance from the way they sort of made it seem yeah. right but if you're interested in this tour and finding out where they filmed it all you will also be going to locations like noto cephalu and palermo all spots that were featured in white lotus season two uh I, that's really cool i have some other i'm going on a gay cruise this in early february oh wow atlantis, atlantis? yeah i was gonna say atlantis no sorry uh vakaya oh. cruise that was it's that's a good one too the, yeah and i was just looking at the itinerary because it's coming up and it's really gonna it's sounding like a sex boat because everything is less and less clothes and they seem to find a way if a sports party is really going to be a jockstrap party there's a, a red light district so i'm i guess it goes along with my goals for 2023 more sex so I, i'm looking forward to that that should be fun <laughs> how about you cody would you go on the, on this well you need to watch white lotus first but yes do you and joe have travel plans for the new year because it seems like a lot of people are back in the game of traveling again so many things are lining up for me as far as travel my cousin has his graduation we're supposed to go to las vegas there's a wedding that we're supposed to go to at the same time so i might be gone for a long stretch of time so and then i went to go to la there's just so many places i want to visit i'm i was looking at new orleans the other day and i was like I really need to get back there because it's such a beautiful, beautiful city. And I I just love New Orleans so much, the vibe there. So, yeah, I want to do a lot of traveling. But now you're talking about Italy and I'm like, let's go there, too. Let's just do it all. (laughs) Well, you could start by watching White Lotus and get up to speed. (laughs) That place you don't have to travel far. I know, right? Right. I could just sit on my couch and be at White Lotus, girl. (laughs) The funny thing about that show, Mike White, who produced, wrote it, he did it partly be, the season one, partly because he, he the pandemic and they could film in a hotel. And so then mm-hmm. they just kept that theme. He's also a big fan, as I was as a kid, of Love Boat, the Love Boat old I show. Yeah. So if you actually look at it, there's similarities. And Jeremy, you might be a little young, but the two Italian girls that are what about me? in the show... <laughs> Well, you didn't watch the, this yet, but there's, a two, oh, okay. there's these, <laughs> these Italian young girls, and they are the hookers. After, I love them. The hookers are patterned after Laverne and Shirley. Did you ever hear of that show? Yes, I have, but I did not know that it, uh, they were in the inspo. J- just a slight, only because these were the, obviously they took a turn and they have their own life on yeah. their own, but these were the things that he watched as a kid, which was really funny. Oh, okay. All right. Moving on to some hot topics, and this is interesting because Sniffies, which is an app, we actually had the marketing director, creative director, Eli Martin, Cody, I think you remember, Mm -hmm. on in 2022 when we had him on to talk about Sniffies, and 
they are naming the horniest cities in the U.S. And they Ooh. did it using raw data, basically, because the way it works is all through GPS. So they were able to see where people were hooking up. And then on the application, because you really just go, it's, it's an application, essentially, but it's not an app. So in other mm -hmm. words, you go on a browser to find, and it's map-based. So do you guys want to know where the horniest city was? Oh, always. New York turned out to took the top spot for the horniest. Really? City. Yeah, I'm not, not surprising. Wow. Coming close, followed by Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and Atlanta. The same five cities were the top spots for hospitality. Although LA took the crown, um, took the crown for hospitality. Actually, the UK came in as the horniest country. That's not surprising, I think. Outside the U.S., followed by Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, and Mexico. Oh. And I'm sure a lot of Mexico was Puerto Vallarta. I just know oh, it yeah. is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while Atlanta took the spot for the cruisiest city, the nation's capital took the award for the most discreet city. Parks and bars were among the most popular scenes with those identifying as verse or verse bottom being the most popular attitude. I don't know. Jeremy, have you tried Sniffy's Out? Because I think you would really like it. No, I haven't. Yeah. And when we had him on, the Eli, he was essentially, like I said, it works on a browser. So it's kind of cool because you can put a profile on there, but you don't have to. And mm -hmm. it doesn't take a lot of writing this whole profile. And I think it's kind of really cool. I mean, Cody, you're not using this right now, but you could... No. If, yeah, I know, but <laughs> it is. I'm. Gonna, I think that's really cool. It doesn't. Does any of are you are any of you surprised at some of the cities that took the top spots? Though, really, not really. Yeah, yeah I'm not I, either. What? Have, yeah. yeah, I just thought there were. I'm. That was pretty much where I thought they would be. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, kudos to that. I think I'm going to continue using that dating app there is a dating app that's not doing so good and i'm not mad at it it's called the right stuff it's a conservative dating app that promised an anti-woke dating experience and it immediately <laughs> struggled to get off the ground it was i launched, wonder why right and it was launched by former donald trump aide john mcintee and the drastic decline in users in just a few months that it was launched in September is not doing good. According to tech firm Sensor Tower, the right stuff saw 40,000 downloads in its first month. However, between November 1st and December 20th, there were just 11,000 downloads. So it's not doing so good. It launched quickly, but was ridiculed for having almost no women using it with one user complaining. Oh, wow. The weird thing is, I could find I couldn't find any women on it. I don't know. Maybe the app is bugged. No, sir. I think it's because women are just you know not cooler than a lot of these men. So and it's free yeah. for women too. So that is it is that should tell them something. Yes, it is. I saw an wow. advertisement for it the other day, and I was like, this is utterly mind blowing is just so insane and the woman that's in the advertisement she's actually really pretty but i would have never I, she's like probably did the advertisement and then went home and took their money and was like i'm not gonna use this damn thing mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's crazy free for women it's we know why now because obviously they want to they're they need women on there to make this thing work but it's almost reminds me of ladies night in the club scene back in the day, ladies get in for free, but men have to pay the cover, uh -huh. which was always like crazy to me, but it was kind of the same thing. We want more women in here and just weird, but all right, moving on. Well, one thing you want to always be on top of, I'm a big proponent. We all are here at tags is to keep yourself safe and healthy, particularly sexually. And here in New York, which I think is really awesome, particularly because I just changed my insurance provider and I wasn't really sure if the new insurance is going to cover my prep, Truvada, generic version, whatever you want to call it. Well, here in New York, it, it will now be required for insurance companies 
to cover PrEP, and that's by Governor Kathy Hochul. I'm so glad I voted for her. Yes. Because <laughs> this is really great. Uh, New York was once the epicenter of the AIDS epidemic, and quote, and we have a moral obligation to keep up the fight to end the epidemic once and for all, Hochul said. PrEP and PEP are critical tools that help prevent new HIV infections, and every eligible New Yorker should have access to these vital medications. Well, one of the reasons they did this was because there's an overall goal, not just set by New York, but set by the Mm -hmm. White House to end HIV in the coming years. And COVID actually saw a decline of people actually going to get their tests done and Mm -hmm. also, then, of course, not getting on things like PrEP. One might argue that perhaps it was because people weren't really having sex and all the rise of have sex virtually. But I just know that a lot of people weren't going to the doctor as much as they used to. I know like my mom, I'm like getting on her back, not for this, obviously, but like, oh, mom, go see your (laughs) doctor. We're crying out loud. You can do this now. And so I think this is a really good thing. I know you uh jeremy tried mister we talked about that before we can get prep and it was free correct yes yeah so will we'll, are you on prep currently and what so your i took like a, a little break from it uh i stopped my subscription with mister because i uh found a new gp and just got it through my doctor and i actually have that physical coming up in a few weeks so i'm just getting routine blood work, and then uh, my refill for all of my medication. Okay, good. So you're getting it that way. I love that. Um, Cody, I know you're not on PrEP, I don't think, but what are your thoughts about, like, at least New York making this insurance companies cover this? I think this is great. It's so necessary. It's. I think that it will have the rates as far as HIV infection go down and anything that can do that is, is amazing. So yeah, I think that's great. Hey there, it's your friend Stevie. And as the host and creator of a sex positive podcast, I know you like myself want a better sex life or are looking to expand upon the good sex you are already experiencing. And if you fall into the latter lucky you. Did you know that 50% of men have symptoms that get in the way of wanting or enjoying sex? So here's the deal. It's 2023 and I've got a question for you, an important one. Do you want better sex and expand on the sex in your life? If you're like me, you're not alone and the answer is a resounding yes. Well, thank goodness for Roman. Roman is the digital health clinic that can help with a plethora of sexual health needs and most importantly offers medication that will help you achieve and maintain a strong erection. And who doesn't want that? Roman offers discreet wipes that help you last, you know what, four times longer in bed. This is one of my goals, you guys, for 2023 so I can have quality and lasting good sex. And you know how here at TAGS, we've been talking a lot about testosterone and how knowing your T levels has a direct effect on your libido, right? Well, if your T levels are low, getting your testosterone levels back up can get your sexy back. Roman offers a testosterone test which includes lab processing and, if it's right for you, treatment for low testosterone. At Roman, you can do everything online and guess what? Avoid those long lines and hassles. And if medication or testing is right for you, Roman will send it directly right to your door. Everything arrives in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. To learn more about how you can achieve your personal sexual health goals, go to ro.co slash tags, T-A-G-S, to get 20% off your entire first order. That's ro.co slash tags. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey guys, your buddy Stevie here, and boy, 2022 really threw me some curveballs. Starting off with my broken ankle, that's right, I had surgery at the beginning of the year in January, and I have to say recovery and physical therapy had me out till at least five months. Well, 
the end of the year has been a little bit complicated for me as well as I had an upper respiratory infection for the last month, keeping me from doing many of the things that I really wanted to do, like travel. You know, there really is no blueprint to life when you're thrown so many lemons like I have been this past year. And that's why BetterHelp is such a great option for so many of us. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. You know, therapy really can be a powerful tool. I can speak from experience. It really has been for me. You know, it can really help you get over that hump, push forward so you aren't stuck especially in your mind. And in my case, it helped me with couples therapy. I can remember I went with my boyfriend at the time and we were not seeing eye to eye. We were arguing all the time. One of the things that therapy helped us do was to communicate better, actually give us the tools to communicate better, to see our differences and ultimately respect each other and respect where each person was coming from. I can't sp explain that enough. It was really huge. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It really couldn't be simpler. I went on there and you can even choose for LGBTQ therapists. There's no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. I also like that you can do it in the comfort of your home. So learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash tags, T-A-G-S. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash tags, T-A-G-S. I love it. Well, you know, we talked a lot last year as well as our health. We also talked about being safe when you go out. And sadly, there were two, there was a roofie, I don't know if you call it an, epidemic but people roofing people in bars and they never really found them until now the two guys that were killed sadly they found the two oh. men in connection with the string of robberies and murders of men who were picked up at bars in new york kenwood allen who's 33 and another unnamed man were arrested and charged with the drug induced deaths of two men Although police said more charges are expected and their investigation continues. But these two guys were, they were a part of a crew who essentially drugged and robbed unsuspecting men after they left many of bars here in Manhattan. And that was beginning of March of last year. Um, Alan was charged with the March 18th death of Nurbo Shira and the July 30th death of Artijan Barisha, and at least 24 other men have been drugged and robbed and sometimes killed under similar circumstances. But police wow. have long suspected a crew was targeting inebriated, inebriated bar goers in the area. That's just really freaky. I mean, I remember not that long ago, I was in a bar and I just had a little bit too much to drink. And I don't think I was very conscious of where my, I was putting my drink down. Mm -hmm. And I remember not remembering how I got home. And I'm not, I'm not saying I was roofied or not, but, or I just had a lot to drink. I'm not sure, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. But these are things that you need to look out for because... I'm not surprised. Does this surprise you that there are people, Cody, or Cody targeting our community no, like this? No, not at all. I think that in this in this day and age, 
we are being targeted a, a lot, actually, by all kinds of different people. And it's really sad to see. And we all need to really be as safe as possible out there and be more mindful. And it's so easy to not take stock of where you put your drink or to get just a little bit too tipsy because I've been there. So I know it, it happens as a human being to do this and you shouldn't feel like ashamed of it. Or I don't know if that's even in in this conversation right now but shame can be in there yeah y- yeah but i don't think that i think that we should all be as safe as possible basically and i really i'm you said that they found the guys that were a part of the crew and that they, they have they been arrested what's going on do you know yes yes they have been oh fabulous so i'm i really yeah. am glad that they they found those guys and and that um i hope justice is served in this yeah, absolutely. You know, Jeremy, it's interesting because you missed a show recently where Lincoln, Cody, and I were talking about a bar in WeHo called Or O R that just opened up. It took over mm-hmm. an old standing bar, the Gold Coast. And one of the things on there was sticker shock, and they're having cocktails at $24. And it did remind me a little bit about the bar you went to in Boston that how much were those drinks? Those were, uh, what were they, like 30 each? Oh, yeah. And yeah. so I'm so thinking at those each prices. For like basic cocktails. Right. I'm thinking at those prices, we're not in danger, I think, of being roofied because we're going to have like literally <laughs> one and you're watching that cocktail like a hot. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. definitely. But, right. But are you. Do, are you on a little bit more high alert when you now go out just when you hear stories like this? Oh, yeah, definitely. I have not been, I've never been one to, never say never, but I have not been common to put my drink down ever. And I will just buy a new one, usually not at $30 a piece, but (laughs) that one I'm sucking down. And then I normally don't put my drink down anywhere. And if I do, I have a friend hold it. Yeah. And retrieve it back from my friend and make sure that they haven't put it down anywhere. But I'm usually good about just keeping my drink with me. I'd rather have it sit on top of a urinal yeah. or on the toilet yeah. like top than be on the bar waiting for someone to roofie it. Listen, we do far more crazy things in the urinal area <laughs> right. and in the stalls. <laughs> so I think we're okay on that. And the other thing is, but we all know, I mean, Jeremy, when you were here, it's really easy to have the night go by and maybe you had one thing in mind i think when you we were going to industry bar here in new york we both Mm -hmm. started the night out thinking oh yeah we're kind of tired we're just going to go from one maybe two drinks and And we ended up staying out way later right on the dance floor partying like it's 1999 and whatever happened to what two drinks i know i had way more than that (laughs) so my point being is that it's really easy to let the night happen and before you know it you're your inhibitions are looser. So yeah. I definitely can attest to that too. I think your your idea of just holding, always holding your drink by you or giving it to a friend or taking it into that stall is the best yeah. bet to keep yourself safe uh, because you do not want to be a victim of this at all. Okay, moving on. You know, in transgender world, Pornhub showed their review, which showed an increase in trans porn searches in 2022. And on top of that, um, there's a naked calendar out in Europe that's celebrating beauty and autonomy of trans bodies, quote, we're gorgeous, and I love who I am. And all trans naked calendars celebrating the beauty, diversity and joy of the community while raising funds for the importance of a cause. And some of the people, the person that put it together essentially went on to Instagram and DM'd various trans uh, people and Mm -hmm. asked them if they would like to be in this. And everybody was for it. Most of them said they wanted to do it naked because they wanted to take the stigma away and not have it, their bodies fetishized, which Mm -hmm. I think is a really good thing, which interesting that horn trans porn searches increased what do you think, Cody, of that? Do you think there's a di- difference? And I love the idea of the calendar. 
I, I mean, hey, a lot of the trans porn is really, I, I like it myself. What are yeah. your thoughts on these two different things that are happening for trans, the transgender community? I love it. I think that trans people should always be celebrated. And I think that with, as trans people are becoming more visible out in, in the world, just in, in the society, I believe that that is why the Googling or the searching for trans porn has become more prevalent because once you see more and more of a certain type of people, then that, that's when you, it, it becomes more of less awkward or less, it becomes just less uh, fetishized, I believe. And I think that because of that, then I feel like more trans people are going to be accepted in our society. So I think it's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. I was talking to somebody, Jeremy, recently about, I do have, I know a friend, and I think he's fetishized trans, the trans community, which I'm sometimes like, I, I don't know if this is really healthy. But what are your thoughts, though, when you, I mean, the calendar sounds great. What do you think about, like, the increase in trans porn? I think it's great. And I think it's still visibility in a, in a different way. And yeah. like you said, I enjoy it, too, and, and watching it and I I just think that being seen is a great feeling, whether it be in a sexual way or not. And I definitely think that there's a fine line between fetish fetish sizing and uh, just actually having an attraction. Yeah, I agree. Right. And one can go in one direction. But listen, the ones putting out the content, this is sometimes their career. And we should not like our gay community. If they want to do that, they should be able to do that. And those they Mm -hmm. need an audience. So yeah, who are we to? Yeah, so it's they should be able to do that as well. Um, But I know, Cody, in the past, you've said, but it should be their choice. And they should also the transgender community, I remember specifically Mm -hmm. many times you saying should also have opportunities as oh, yes. well that they often don't have mm-hmm. and not to I say that like... all of them are going towards this because they don't have opportunities but it's something to consider oh yeah definitely i feel like this is more of a celebration of their bodies and i think that what you're uh, referring to is them uh, feeling like prostitution is their only option and i think that that we should definitely be telling our trans brothers and sisters that they are there's more options available for them than that. So, yeah. But if it's their choice, then more power to them and do what you want to do. Sex work is work. So I'm here for all of that. So, Got it. All right. Well, moving on, I really want you guys. We've talked a lot about this over the last year, and I have some new thoughts on it. But guys recently on a Reddit thread were basically sounding off on whether online nudes, like posting nude pictures, will hurt their careers uh, on the ask gay bros reddit thread they asked the question does one risk their professional reputation by posting nudes online there was all kinds of people that said absolutely not it's just me i get to do what i want it turns me on so much seeing other guys my age posing fully naked online there was a few people that said that if you're in like a, in a teacher, perhaps not the best. I know we've talked a lot about this, but I've been thinking more about it. And particularly even with this show, and it's not necessarily me talking about posting nudes, but there is the NSFW, not suitable for work. Mm-hmm. And one of the things on this show is, you know, we have, and we're very grateful for our sponsors on the show that we get. But when I first started this new platform where we uploaded our podcast to, they had this advertisement that we could get just for doing nothing. And they would just slip in at the beginning of the show and it was just support, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then they got ripped away and I asked my contact, what happened to those? Because it was money, right? And they said, they've deemed your show and many others that talk about sexuality. And, And you know, in defense of my, the people that we post with, they did everything they could to try and keep this, but they said, we have been deemed NSFW, not suitable for work. And it's like, but that is going into my money. (laughs) So (laughs) I guess then everybody says you need to be on social media. You got to promote the show on this. Well, there are times when we post things on TikTok and they take the sound away because 
of a word or something that we said. And instead of having something where you could click adult only, I think, which is mm-hmm. kind of the key, that they just rip the sound away. Well, that also can affect ultimate money and followers. So I do think about some of these things sometimes because ultimately they can affect your money. And mm-hmm. I don't like that. And it's just a whole thing. I don't know, Jeremy, what are your thoughts about posting nudes personally? And do you think it really can affect careers? I think it really just depends on the career. I mean, I think everyone has different fields of work. And I think it depends on the exposure of where it goes. And I personally prefer like disappearing nudes on apps Mm -hmm. rather than like having nudes out there just posted and floating around but it's also like i said the line of work if you're working and nudity helps that or you have an only fans account and it gets leaked then it might not affect you negatively as it will affect you positively right and i think in the past some of the conversations we've had so much cody were mm-hmm people should just be able to, it shouldn't really matter essentially, maybe if you're a teacher, but I know we were talking about stories of a police officer who was do, a porn, do, doing only fans, mm-hmm. but everybody was pretty much on the side. Well, on his free time, he should be able to do what he wants, not on the job, but yeah, you know, I'm coming from the standpoint, it can also affect your money flow too. Yeah. There was another story of, of, you know, somebody didn't hire this host to host this big, uh, it was like a, um, a benefit. And it was backed, though. It was, it was a gay benefit, mind you. But it was backed by a major company. And the company simply looked at the, the host's Instagram. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But, mm-hmm. oh, I've tell been me told later. I can't say that. <laughs> I'll tell you later. And so... Uh, he the he they were told by the company you should maybe find somebody else and they're like why he's well known he's well known in the community he's well loved and they said because on his instagram he shows his ass sometimes and we're talking like instagram ass and that was enough for the company to really not use him and they ultimately found a way to get him on but see what i mean about companies and yeah I mean, I know, Cody, if it's affecting your money. (laughs) Yeah, that's when you got to make the tough decisions. In In a perfect world, it really honestly wouldn't matter. But I think that when to some people, it doesn't it 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 really affects them having overtly sexual conversations and i think that that is where the problem lies and i think that the the way that we overcome that is by having the type of conversations that we have on this show and make normalizing it just like like we talked in in the last story about normalizing and making sure that trans bo- trans bodies are more accepted we should just have continue to have these conversations and putting our sexuality in the mainstream on front street and making sure that people are comfortable with it. So I think that as society evolves, then that is when it won't be a problem anymore. But right now we got to kind of take it into consideration, unfortunately. Particularly when we're being called by certain segments of the population as groomers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're in that rut right now. The other thing I find really hilarious is and it took me so long. To, I'm really bad with acronyms. Like, I never know it. And you know how some people like the whole conversation in text is an acronym? I'm like, shit, I'm on Google looking everything <laughs> up. But NSFW, I was like, what is that? No, but the whole thing about NSFW is what is really suitable for work? Aren't you supposed to be doing your job anyway? So <laughs> it's okay. Even Reddit, even when you go on Reddit, if somebody's asking a little bit for advice a little bit more about a sexual nature, it'll say not suitable for work. But are you supposed to really be going through Reddit threads in general while you're doing your job? I think I just no. think it's so funny. Do you? Like what they yeah. Get to what work. Gonna damn it. I was just gonna say get, get to, to work. work. Right. <laughs> get off your phone. Don't, I don't think <laughs> right. None of it technically, I'm sure by any company, is suitable for work. They want you to be working right. and not being scrolling, but whatever. All right. Well, speaking of Reddit, we've got to give some advice here or weigh in on somebody. By the way, we do give advice here on Tags Podcast, and we're really looking to give you our thoughts this year in 2023 like we've done in the past. You can always go to tagspodcast.com 
and message us there or DM us on Instagram at Tags Podcast. Okay, well, a recent Reddit thread asked the question, should I contact, and this is kind of a good one because it's the new year, should I contact a Tinder match further if he doesn't respond to my happy new year text? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. So I've been texting this dude on an app and we exchanged numbers. Texting turned into sexting and it felt so good having someone respond to you so quickly and with enthusiasm. We determined to hook up and have the most amazing time ever. When I met him for a meal, we found that we had a lot in common and thought we were getting along just fine. Things were going great until he told me that I wasn't the one immediately after the meal. Wow. He offered to be my friend or friends with benefits, but the hookup was included. I was paralyzed with shock for a hot minute. So we ended up having really good time hooking up, and then he offered me a ride home. I told him that I'm down to be friends with him, and I, I'm open to hookups, but I'm not forcing them. I'm asking if he was down to get something after the holidays, and he said, sure. I hugged and left. I've been resisting the temptation to text him until now because I was still processing the rejection. After venting and letting go to some extent with some of the feelings gone away, I decided to send a Happy New Year text to snuff out a reaction, Mm -hmm. and he hasn't sent me a Happy New Year's text back. I'm starting to realize that he might have said what he said just to soften the blow of rejection and just wanted the hookup only. Here's the... The big question, which I think I know the answer, should I contact him (laughs) if he doesn't reply to my Happy New Year's text? He said he'd be down, but I'm starting to suspect the false promises made after the rejection. Jeremy, should he contact him, and how do you deal with rejection? I'd say hell no, and move on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I just, it doesn't sound like someone that you want to invest any more time in, or sex, and it sounds like the person's being too lackadaisical into getting back to him. And I don't know. I think if you want to answer the text, you're going to. And I would say on to the next one. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I told the story about last year. I went on gay speed dating and hooked, met up with a guy. We were a match. We went on a great date. We made out at the end of the date. And then we, he was going on a trip. And when he came back, he contacted me. Mm-hmm. And then canceled the date that wow. he set up. And I never got a reason, a season or anything, Ayala <laughs> about, <laughs> about it. And I had to just say, you know what? I may never know this, I am, but I am not bl- blowing up his phone and finding out because it's just, no, it's not worth it. What are your thoughts on that, Cody? I totally agree with both of you. Uh, hell no, it's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I have definitely been on that receiving end of rejection and definitely invested so much time and effort into somebody who clearly wasn't interested in me. And it's just not worth it. It doesn't do anything for your self-esteem. And I think that he should find somebody that's genuinely interested in him go on as many dates as you can and just take it from there find somebody that really wants to to be there for you so and yeah you're right rejection is going to happen and why not start the new year off like listen you didn't get the response you wanted move on if he's really interested even in friends with benefit i think he will reach out to you the other thing is it is always tricky in the holiday season on who to reach out to, who to wish Merry Christmas, who to say Happy New Year to. There was a guy that I met actually when you were here, Jeremy, and I was like, should I wish him a Happy New Year? And I did. And he responded right back, Happy New Year. And then I I got the response I wanted in a timely manner. And then I mm-hmm. thought, all right, we need to get together. You know, let's get together in the new year. And so things are looking up, guys, in oh, 2023. Yeah. I know. 2023. I'm looking forward. About is reciprocity, year. yes. There you go, absolutely. And finally, this because we many of our goals, even you, Cody, because you can you are having gay sex. I am. <laughs> it's just with your boyfriend. Hey. I love this next <laughs> le, next and last Reddit thread that we gotta answer this guy's question, and he starts it off with, "Am I being a slut?" Okay. So recently came out of a long term, sexually boring, monogamous relationship. And I'm trying to catch up for lost <laughs> time. <laughs> Preach. I met with some grinder hookups for the last two months. I have a fuck buddy too. 
and I'm going to two to three hookups a week lately. Is this normal for a single guy or am I being too slutty? P.S. I do wear a condom except for my friends with benefit. We're exclusive in that. I do have regular blood tests. I'm very clean and I'm trying to get on prep, which is hard to obtain in my country. Okay. Is he being a slut, Jeremy? I think he's living his life. And I think that if he's cautious about what he's doing and it sounds like he is, then I would just say get your routine testing and continue living your best life and have fun. Yeah, I didn't think at all. I thought he it was, a you know, I think it's good to reflect on your behavior at all times, mm-hmm. period, you know, just kind of think about it. And why not post this and ask the question? I think it's totally... I've heard of people, though, where they are sex addicts or going in that direction where they're having mm-hmm. multiple partners in one day. Mm-hmm. And I forget who I was talking to. And mm-hmm. they it turned into sex addiction where they were literally in one day where I had four different partners and it was more of like this game and an addictive type of behavior, two to three t- hookups a week. I mean, come on. I don't think what, but what are your thoughts, Cody? I agree with you guys. I think that this is totally normal, especially after a breakup. And he said that the sex was boring. Now get your life, honey. You had a good time. You're having a good time. And you know, as long as you're being <laughs> safe, and doing your doing what you taking the necessary precautions, then you know enjoy yourself. Right, we talk a lot about it on the show too. Your sexuality and your sex life goes through phases and different periods. So you, Jeremy, were saying you've t- you were on a hiatus on prep. Now you're thinking of going mm-hmm. back. I think that's how it was intended to be anyway. I, mm-hmm. I we were saying celibate, but now we're going in a different direction, and we'll see where we end up with that. But it's you have different periods where you're and when you are when I'm more sexually active I'm definitely so for example if I know what I did and it's like the last time I saw my doctor he's like do you want me to do the swab on your ass and your throat I'm like nope I'm good because I was pretty (laughs) certain I did being pretty not having much sex it was a you know, a particular year with my broken ankle and then being sick Mm -hmm. all of November so I'm like no don't bother but as I potentially become more sexually active, we're going to layer in that swab on the ass and the throat. Do all the swabs, then, honey. <laughs> yeah, do all, do everything. Just check everything. And I just think ebbs and flows and it just, no, you shouldn't be hard on yourself and this is where you're at now. But really good to kind of reflect on where you're at at different points in the year because we're always evolving. I think that's, that's right. healthy. And I think that uh, even yeah, asking the even asking the question, "Am I being a slut?" That probably means that you're not being a slut. You could probably be sluttier. <laughs> Ooh, all right, <laughs> listener out there, Reddit thread, be sluttier for 2023. I like that. That's my goal. Okay, always so much fun. Thank you guys for weighing in. You can always follow my co-host. You can follow Jeremy on Instagram at J Ross Lopez at J Ross Lopez. And follow Cody. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching or on his personal account, Mr. Maurice. And of course, follow us at Tags Podcast on all social media platforms. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Wish babe. You both. Yeah, happy new year and all. We want to hear from you guys too. So reach out to us and let us know how you are ringing in the new year or what goals you might have. Sexual goals, of course, we really want to know. Definitely. And yeah. We'll report back. Okay. In the meantime, continue having hot, hot, gay, gay sex. sex.